In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Intro e por altari tei. Adeum credentificat credentuti miam. Iudica me Deus et discerni causa meam de gentinos ab homine neco et doloso everywhere me. Quia Deus Deus potido mea quare me repolis et quare tristis incide de mob legit me enemicus. Emite lucem tuam et veritatem tuam ipsa me deducerent et aducerent in montem sanctum tuam et in tabernacula tua. Et in tribu altari adeum credentificat credentuti miam. Confite per tu. Vitara Deus, Deus meus, quari tristis es anima mea, et quari conturbas me. Spirand Deo, cuniam ad hocum petibor eles a la taipultas me, et Deus me. Gloria Patri, et Filiu, et Spiritui Sancto. Sigur de rat in principio, et nunca cim peret in secula seculorum. Intro ibo ad altari Dei. Adium culite te ficat e ventuti mia. Aditorium nostrum in nomine Domini. Repetit celum et eram. Confit ir Deo omnipotenti, Beati Maria, Semper Virgini, Beati Michele, Arcangelo, Beati Ioanni Baptiste, Sanctis Apostolis, Petro, et Paolo, Omnibus Sanctis, et Fobis Fratres, Quia peccava in imis cogitazione verbo et opere. Mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa. Idio precor beata Mariam semper virginem, beata Michaelem Arcangelum, beata Miwana Baptistam, Sanctus Apostolus Petrum et Palum, omnes Sanctus et vos fratres, orare pro mea Dominum Deum nostrum. Misericordiae, omnipotens Deus, mi dispicate istu, spiducate vita metterum. Amen. Non fece di potente, beata mea semper virginem, beata mea Cangelo, beata mea Baptisti, Sanctus Apostolus Petrum et Palum, ne vos Sanctus de mea Pater, quia peccava in imis cogitazione verbo et opere. Mia culpa, mia culpa, mia maxima culpa. Ere pecar beata mea sempre virgin, beata mea cangelum, beata mea baptistam, sanctus petalus peto et palum omnia sanctus et ipater. Orare po mea dominum deum nostri. Miseriatri vestri omnipotens Deus, et de misis peccatis vestris perducat vos ad vitam eterna. Amen. Indulgentiam absolutionem et remissionem peccatorum, nostrum tribuat nobis omnipotens et misericoris dominus. Amen. Deus tu conversus vivificabis nos. Et leptua let abitro in ti. Ostende nobis domine misericordiam tuam. Et salatae tuam dun. Domine exaudia rationem meam. Et clamor mi este bene. Dominus fobiscum. Et cum spiritu tu. O remus. Justus a palma florebit sicut cedrus Libani, multiplicabitur plantatus in Domo Domini, in atris Domus Dei nostri, bonum est confiteri Domino, et salare nomini Tua Altissime, Gloria Patri et Filiu et Spiritui Sancto, sicut erat in principio, et nunc et semper et in saecula saeculorum. Amen. Justus a palma florebit sicut cedrus Libani, multiplicabitur plantatus in Domo Domini, in atris Domus Dei nostri. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Gloria in excelsis Deo et in terra pax homini bisponi voluntatis. Laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te, gratias agimus tibi propter magnum gloriam tuam. Domine Deus rex celestis Deus Pater omnipotens, Domine Filii unigenite Iesu Christe, Domine Deus agnus Dei Filius Patris, qui tolis peccata mundi miserere nobis, qui tolis peccata mundi suscipe deprecationem nostram, qui sedes ad exteram Patris miserere nobis, quoniam tu solus sanctus, tu solus Dominus, tu solus altissimus Iesu Christe, cum sancto spiritu, in gloria Dei Patris. Amen. A Dominus Fobiscum. Et cum spirit tuo. O Remus, Deus qui per beatum Filipum, confessorem tuum, eximium nobis humilitatis exemplum tribuisti, da famulis tuis prospera mundi ex huius imitationi de spicere et celestis semper inquirere per Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum Filium tuum, qui tecum vivit et regnat in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Lexio Epistoli Beati Pali Apostoli ad Corinthios Fratres, Spectaculum facti sumus mundo et angelis et hominibus nos stulti propter Christum, vos autem prudentes in Christo, nos infirmi vos autem fortes, vos nobiles nos autem ignobiles, usque in hanc horam et esurimus et sitimus et nudisumus et colafis cedimur et instabiles sumus et laboramus operantes manibus nostris. Amen. 
<coughs> maledicimur et benedicimus, persecutionem patimur et sustinemus, blasphemamur et obsecramus, tam quam purgamenta huius mundi facti sumus, omnium peripsema usque ad huc, non ut confundam vos hec scribo, sed ut filios meus carissimus monio, in Christo Jesu Domino Nostro. Dio grazie. <coughs> Osius di meditabitur sapientiam et lingua eus loquetur judicium, Lex Dei eus in corde ipsius, et non supplantabuntur gracius eus, Alleluia, Alleluia, <coughs> Beatus vir qui timet Dominum, in mandatis eus cupid nimis, Alleluia. Dominus Vobiscum. Sequentia Sancti Evangelii secund Lucam. In illo tempore dixit Jesus discipuli suis, nolite temere pus silus grex, quia complacuit patri vestro dare vobis regnum. Vendite que post idetis et date elemosina, facite vobis saculos, qui non veterascunt, tesaurum non deficientem in celis, quo fur non appropria neque tinia corrumpit, Ubi enum tesaurus vester est, ibi et cor vestrum erit. Las tebi Christi. And uh, so, my dear friends, um, outside of this church, because there are only uh, two people in this church, three people, sorry, uh, and uh, this sermon, of course, is directed to those who may have uh, tuned in via uh, YouTube uh, to this um, live streamed Mass. Just as a reminder, this Mass is being live, is live streamed normally on Sundays, uh, at, I believe it's 9.30, don't take my word for it. Um, but during the current uh, level four lockdown here in New Zealand, um, this mass is being um, transmitted every day, daily, uh, at 7 a.m. New Zealand time. So you have to figure out where you are if you're listening in another part of the world, uh, what time it is at uh, 7 a.m. New Zealand time where you are, what time is it there if you are following this. Um, certainly, um, I would urge you to share this uh, website uh, and this Mass, this daily live streamed Mass, uh, with those whom you know. Uh, let them know of it if you think it would be beneficial to them and they would like to uh, participate in it. Of course, you cannot have the same participation, the same level or degree of participation um, in the uh, live streamed Mass as you can by being there in person. But of course, we are now prevented from uh, uh, um, providing the Mass to a congregation, a living congregation, uh, present here in the church uh, due to the present restrictions uh, owing to the government's uh, lockdown of the country. And uh, this may be true in other parts of the world as well. Uh, and so, nonetheless, by uh, tuning into this live stream Mass, um, you can participate with it from afar. Uh, you can certainly make your intentions, your offerings, your sacrifices uh, at the same time. These certainly will have uh, a, uh, an effect in the heavenly composition of things um, and will also bring down many graces upon you. You can, of course, while not being able to receive Holy Communion sacramentally, will be able to uh, receive it spiritually by making a good spiritual communion during the Mass. And so hopefully this might be a bit of a help to you. Um, we have an opportunity, obviously, because we have not just myself, but uh, several priests who 
participate in taking turns to uh, celebrate this Mass and to be able to speak a few words to you, perhaps uh, via the uploaded Mass, the, uh, the live streamed Mass. And so, not knowing how long this will go on, and yet we've received very positive feedback from those of you who have tuned in from wherever you may be. Uh, as to the uh, the effectiveness and the uh, the welcome, the, how how this mass is is welcome to you, and so we're we're grateful for that, and it uh, also points the way to us that we realize that perhaps we have a uh, another apostolate that we had not even been counting on, but which may be very very effective, and so we need to use it carefully, we need to use it well, um, we also have to be careful because we are dependent upon a technology which these days is practicing quite a bit of censorship. Uh, given uh, the events in the world today. Uh, speaking of those events, there's a lot going on. Um, more than perhaps many realize who don't uh, otherwise follow or allow themselves to be annoyed by uh, the storm and drang that's uh, going on around us throughout the entire world. Um, for myself, uh, as an American, um, I'm particularly concerned about what is going on today in Afghanistan, which you may be following, not, not just because of the, <clears throat> excuse me, the tragedy that that whole situation has become, <clears throat> but because uh, the, at least, uh, participants in that tragedy, if not the cause of it, is unfortunately uh, my own uh, American government, which uh, in this situation today uh, I, I, I don't want to comment on it. it. It is truly too dire. And so please do pray for the poor people in Afghanistan <coughs> who are uh, victims of this. Uh, innocent victims, uh, but victims nonetheless. Uh, and also, uh, please do pray for the significance of this tragedy as it resounds and will continue to resound for a long time to come throughout the entire world. Uh, and those of you who are perhaps more familiar with the geopolitical situation in the world today will understand what I mean and I'm not going to really go into that. Um, the situation I believe really began in earnest when I was 18 years old and that was the year in 1962 that the Second Vatican Council uh, was convoked and ended in 1965. In my 77 years of life I have come to believe that that council was a truly pivotal event in, in, in world history, and we see the results that have followed. And I won't enumerate them all, there are too many of them. Uh, among the diseases that we suffer today, COVID being one of them, uh, I haven't counted them, but I do know of at least four that did not exist when I was a child. Um, and therefore, we have to ask where they came from. Um, but that again is perhaps subject for another talk. Um, it's very difficult to focus on the precise uh, wounds, if you will, uh, to human society in general throughout the world in one small speech, talk, sermon here. Um, and so I have to pick and choose very carefully, also keeping my eye on the fact that if I say the wrong thing, we could be censored and I don't want that to happen. So I will try to keep it as, as elevated as possible um, and to keep it uh, focused on what we now can do about it. Um, the lockdowns and such and other, it, other things that are throughout the world, they're all over the world, they're all over the world, um, are whatever their purpose may be, alleged or otherwise, the obvious effect that they are having is to atomize society, to uh, break the bonds that exist uh, between people to break the normal everyday bonds that bind us together as family, as society, as church, as government, whatever. And in doing so, it makes those who have been atomized, us, much more vulnerable to those who would tyrannize, us, tyrannize over us. And I think that that is the essential purpose of these lockdowns and of these other social distancing and so forth and so on. Um, it's not owing to a disease, but I will not get into that. I'm just simply going to say that the effect, whatever the purpose may be, what the effect is to scatter us. And as our Lord said, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. So this is precisely the mechanism at work here. The shepherd has been smitten. 
I believe that the shepherd, uh, the Pope, uh, the uh, Vicar of Christ, a title which today's Pope no longer bears. He no longer accepts that title. The only title that Pope Francis accepts, uh, barely even Pope, he styles himself the Bishop of Rome. It's very telling. It's very telling. And I want to speak a little bit about that because I do believe that <clears throat> this initial collapse, uh, not from external circumstances, but from internal deliberate um, actions and intentions, has destroyed itself. The Church has been, since the Second Vatican Council, in a process of auto-demolition. And this is tragic for a number of reasons, not the least of which is it destroys the uh, effectiveness of the authority that should be behaving according to the teachings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and is not, is not. I'll give you an example, very simple, very, very uh, um, uh, timely, actually. Um, I'm reading a book, I'll show it to you here. It's titled, The Priest, His Dignity and Obligations. I've been reading it for some time, I'm halfway through it. It's by a saint, it's written by St. John Eudes. Who is St. John Eudes? St. John Eudes <clears throat> is a French saint. He was born in 1601, the very beginning of the 17th century, and died later in 1680, again in France. He was canonized in 1925. His feast day just passed, August 19th. He, as a priest, did many, many things for the good of the church, for which he's been canonized and remembered to this day. He founded a religious congregation, of both of men and women, of Jesus and Mary, the Eudist Fathers, um, which was, is no longer, I'm afraid, because again of the Second Vatican Council, it was an order dedicated to the training of candidates for the priesthood and to the preaching of missions. My, my, doesn't that sound a lot like the founder of our own particular society, St. Pius X, um, Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, who did precisely the same things. I would say, candidly, I think the Archbishop's scope of effectiveness was greater than that of St. John Eudes, and we won't go into that now. That's perhaps time for another talk, depending upon how long this lockdown lasts. St. John Eudes was educated by the Jesuits at Cannes in France. He entered the uh, oratory, uh, the, uh, which was a, a, a religious order founded by St. Philip Neri in, in Rome, and he was ordained in 1625. So we're talking about a man, a very active man, a very, a very uh, zealous uh, apostle, the very zealous missionary, uh, who lived, what, uh, 17, 18, 19, 20, um, almost 400 years ago, almost 400 years ago. And I bring him up because we also celebrated a, uh, another feast yesterday. I honestly don't know how much weight this feast has today uh, in the new church reformed, deformed by the Second Vatican Council. Um, and namely that feast, of course, was the Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, a very beautiful feast. Speaking of the Blessed Virgin Mary, in his book, The Priest, His Dignity and Obligations, there is a section which St. John Eudes titles, The Salvation of Souls is the Great Work of the Mother of God. And he starts out, the salvation of immortal souls is also the great work of the mother of God. Why did Almighty God choose the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of God? I spoke about that extensively in my sermon yesterday. Why did he preserve her from original sin and make her holy from the very first moment of her life? Why did he shower upon her so many privileges, ornamenting her with grace and virtue? Why did he confer upon her so much wisdom, goodness, meekness, and such great power in heaven, in hell, and on earth? It was simply that she might be worthy to cooperate with her divine son in man's redemption. Let me repeat that. It was so that she might be worthy to cooperate with her divine son in man's redemption. All, of the, he goes on, all of the fathers of the church say clearly that she is co-redemptrix. 
Mary is co-redemptrix. The mother of God is co-redemptrix. She, with her son, redeemed mankind. That's the essence of the statement. Co-redemptrix with Christ in the work of our salvation. I hear our Lord and his blessed mother saying to St. Bridget, whose revelations are approved by the church, that Adam and Eve lost the world by eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but they saved it by a heart. That is, our Lord and his mother each had, referring to yesterday's feast of the Immaculate Heart, each of them had but one heart, one love, one sentiment, one mind, one will with each other. As the sacred heart of Jesus was a furnace of love for men, so the heart, it's not defined here as the Immaculate Heart, the heart of his loving mother was inflamed with charity and zeal for souls. Christ immolated himself upon the cross for the redemption of mankind, and Mary made a similar sacrifice in undergoing untold sufferings and sorrows. And so we have here in this document, this book written by St. John Hughes, a saint of 400 years ago. I don't know whether it's the first enunciation of the title co-redemptrix, but certainly since that time, 400 years ago, there had been no longer, there had been a strong impetus within the church pushed by many uh, great orators and priests and bishops and popes to define this title of co-redemptrix and of mediatrix of all graces, dogmatically affixing them to the person of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God. So what has happened to that? What has happened to that impetus? Well, there was an editorial written recently um, about uh, this very notion of co-redemptrix. And it starts as uh, speaking with a certain individual for a book-length interview published as God and the World, a conversation. The then cardinal, he's not named, the then cardinal said, the formula co-redemptrix, this is a present cardinal, this is a living cardinal, he's not identified. The present formula co-redemptrix departs to too great an extent from the language of Scripture and of the Fathers. Not according to St. John Eudes. St. John Eudes says all the Fathers of the Church agree in titling her co-redemptrix. But no, this present-day Cardinal says otherwise, that it departs. And therefore it gives rises to misunderstandings. That's a lot of blah, 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 which says it's a lie. Fine. He goes on, this unnamed cardinal, everything comes from him. Everything comes from him, Christ. As if Christ is some kind of a despotic dictator who does not share his authority nor give it to others to exercise also. As the letter to the Ephesians and the letter to the Colossians in particular tell us, Mary too is everything she is through him. Ratzinger, now Pope Emeritus as they call him, Benedict XIV, he said, the word co-redemptrix would obscure this origin, a correct intention being expressed in the wrong way. Indeed. On Wednesday, Francis, Pope Francis, said that Christ, Christ, Christ is the mediator par excellence. That's true. No question. That's true. He is the bridge that we cross to turn to the Father and the only Redeemer. Every prayer that we give to God is for Christ with Christ and through Christ and are realized through his intercession. There is no other name by which we can be saved, Pope Francis insisted. Mary, he goes on, <clears throat> is the path to Jesus and has a role of privilege as the mother of Jesus to the point that she might even be considered as, oh, maybe the first apostle who always points her finger to Christ, always present in the key passages of the gospel, such as Cana when her son thanks to her caring intervention, performs his first sign, and then on to Golgotha at the foot of the cross. How nice of them to say that. He goes on, this is the Pope again speaking. Jesus extended <clears throat> Mary's maternity to the entire church when he entrusted her to his beloved disciple, that's John, St. John, before dying on the cross. From that moment on, we have all been gathered under her mantle as depicted in certain medieval frescoes or paintings Francis said, only medieval. 
The term, this is not Francis, the term <coughs> co-redemptrix implies Mary had a subordinate but essential participation in the redemption of souls because of her free consent to give life to Christ through which she shared his life, suffering, and death. There's really nothing wrong with that. That's probably true. It's absent, however, the article goes on, it's absent from papal teaching with the exception of Pope Leo XIII's 1894 encyclical uh, Jucunda Semper Expectatione, dedicated to the Rosary, in which he says, quote, in the Rosary, all the part that Mary took as our co-redemptress comes to us. He says it comes to us in the Rosary, as it were set forth, and in such wise as though the facts were even then taking place. And this with much profit to our piety, whether in the contemplation of the succeeding sacred mysteries or in the prayers which we speak and repeat with the lips. So that was the, the, the uh, uh, comment of Pope Leo XIII, titling her also co-redemptrix. And yet recently in March 2021, referring back to Pope Francis, this article begins, Pope Francis said on Wednesday, that was uh, uh, again just uh, two months ago, or uh, actually, yes, two months ago, said on Wednesday, the Virgin Mary is not co-redemptrix with Christ. A title which some theological movements in recent decades have tried to assign, assign to the Mother of God. No, I'm sorry, Pope Francis. It's not just a few, few decades, uh, recent decades. It goes back 400 years and before that as well. Before that as well. Jesus, Francis said, speaking off the cuff, by the way, entrusted the entire church and all the faithful to Mary, but as a mother, not as a goddess. I don't recall any, any saint or pope ever having, decide, having even implied that Mary is a goddess, but Francis thinks so. Not as a co-redemptrix, as a mother. That's true. She is our mother. He goes on, it's true that Christian piety always gives beautiful titles to her, like a son to the mother. How many beautiful things does a son say to the mother? But pay attention, Francis continues, the beautiful things that the church, the saints, say to Mary, take nothing, nothing, nothing away from, as if Mary would take that away from, the uniqueness of Christ as Redeemer. The uniqueness, i.e., that is, Jesus Christ is the only Redeemer. No one shares in that. No one, because Jesus keeps it all to himself. He doesn't share anything with anybody else. Well, what did he do when he said to St. Peter, but thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. He gave to Peter his power, his authority to govern the church which he left on earth. Jesus Christ has always shared his authority, the authority of Almighty God with men, so that we may participate with him to the fullest extent. He's entrusted to us many, many things, which today, sadly, we are failing to do. He the Pope says, Christ is the only Redeemer. Those Marian titles are expressions of love, like a son to the mother, sometimes exaggerated. What did St. Augustine say? Of Mary there is never enough. Pope Francis says, we exaggerate. Exaggerated, but we know love always makes us do exaggerated things. Love sickness. Francis said. Departing from these quotes from, Saint Fra from Pope Francis, the title of Mary as co-redemptrix dates to the Middle Ages. That's true. That's true. St. John Eudes. And the idea of declaring it as a church dogma was discussed, though not adopted, at the Second Vatican Council in the, 19, uh, the, Second Vatican Council. In the 1990s, the American Catholic theologian Mark Miraval of the Franciscan University of Steubenville launched a petition asking the Pope to make such a declaration and today the co-redemptrix devotion tends to be strongest among more conservative Catholics. Gosh, who could that be? What Francis said on Wednesday is in line with what he said before about the Mother of God and it's an assertion he's often made speaking 
while departing from his written text. For instance, back in December 2019, during a Mass in St. Peter's Basilica, in honor of Our Lady of Guadalupe, patroness of the Americas, he called the idea of Mary being co-redemptrix, quote, unquote, foolishness. Foolishness. Take that, St. John Hughes, you're a fool. Is that not what Pope Francis has said? St. John Hughes is guilty of foolishness. And all those others who have since that time titled Our Lady with co-redemptrix and mediatrix of all graces. Now, I don't bring all this up to you in defense of this title or in defense of or advocating for this title and the title of, mediatrix, of Mary as mediatrix of all graces as something that we need to pursue. Yes, we do. But the real problem here is when you have a pope calling a canonized saint who has done more for the church in his life than the present pope has, calling St. John Hughes foolish, and anyone who says this foolish, we have a problem. Where is the authority now? What is the authority now? Who do we believe now? Where do we go now? How do we save our souls now? Whom do we, whom do we listen to now? This is the essential problem we are suffering today, my dear people. We are suffering a total destruction and breakdown of authority. I stand before you as a simple priest. I have authority in the confessional. Beyond that, I don't have much, very little. Bishops have a lot of authority. Cardinals have a lot of authority. The Pope has supreme authority. Which bishop, which cardinal, which archbishop, which pope can you point to today who is has exercised or is exercising the authority that Jesus Christ gave to St. Peter and to his successors. When a pope says of a saint and many others intervening, they are fools. Fools. That's what he has said. And this leaves us, as our Lord said, smitten because the shepherd is smitten. It's certainly a... Uh, uh, a punishment. Uh, there are many things that we could do to correct this situation. Whether we will do them or not, I don't know. But at the present moment, we're really pretty much left on our own. Thank God for Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, I would say that, although he certainly, even to this day, is criticized, maligned, detracted from, calumniated. Were it not for Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, the church would be dead and gone today. Sacraments would be gone today. Do you think, do you think that the sacraments are alive and well in the Novus Ordo Church? Do you think that the Second Vatican Council and the succeeding popes thereafter have done their best to protect this precious treasury of grace which comes to us only through the sacraments and by which only can we be saved. Without the sacraments, we are lost. And the Second Vatican Council and all of the intervening popes and bishops and cardinals have done their very best to destroy the sacramental system. The only one who has preserved it, the only one who has preserved the authentic priesthood is one man, Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre. No one else. Thank God for him. Because without him, we would not have the Mass today. We would not have the sacraments today. We would truly be bereft if, indeed, that stroke of the Second Vatican Council has destroyed the link in their sacraments to Jesus Christ. And I believe it's certainly very possible. Oh, Father, do you mean perhaps that modern priests in the, in, the, in the Novus Ordo Church might not be really priests? Hmm. Isn't that an interesting question? A lot of not a lot of debate has gone on about that. There has been some significant debates, but not a lot, because people don't want to admit to themselves that maybe it's true. Maybe it's true. Maybe in the Novus Ordo Church, there is no grace. 
go to any one of their so-called Eucharists. They cringe from even calling it Mass today. Where is their grace? Where is their dignity? Where is Jesus Christ? Where is it? Does it come through these presiders? They're not called priests anymore. They're presiders. They preside over the congregation. Where two or three are gathered together, there am I in their, in their midst, said Jesus. That's true. But that's being used as a substitute for the sacraments, which we receive only the graces, only through the sacraments. Without the sacraments, we're done, we're cooked, we're dead. It's gone. The church is over. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ provided specifically for that eventuality, left us with, because we deserve it, left us with a total destruction of the exercise, the proper exercise of authority. And if we do not see it in the present Pope calling a saint a fool because he titles the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, co-redemptrix, I'm afraid we are blind. I'm afraid we are blind. So what to do? We certainly do not repudiate that authority. That's what St. Vicantists do. I personally believe that anybody made Pope will be Pope. My father perhaps may behave badly and as not a father, as an anti-father, if you will, he's my father. I may have to disobey him when he commands me to do things that are against the law of God, against common sense, against reason, are unjust. He's still my father. That's not the point. The point is not whether Pope Francis is or is not Pope. The point is, how is he behaving himself as the supposed Pope? I don't think he's supposed. He is the Pope. And that poor man and the Popes before him up to the beginning of the Second Vatican Council will bear the full responsibility of the damage that they have unleashed upon the Church and upon the faithful and upon the world. Because do you think that the present breakdown in the governments of the world of their authority is not somehow affected by, if not caused by, this, this destruction of authority within the church. This is what Jesus Christ meant when he said, I will smite the shepherd because you deserve it. And the sheep will be scattered because you deserve it. Because you seek your own comfort. You seek your own way. You seek your own will. You do not seek me. You do not seek my father as I was sought my father while he was on earth. You're not doing that. Therefore, why should Jesus Christ waste grace on a feckless, cowardly people? Why? So, we must pick up and do things the best we can on our own. Go where you can receive true sacraments. My own per per particular contention is in all of this, the only place you can do that is from the priests of the Society of St. Pius X. One thing Rome has never contested that our priesthood is valid, that we give valid sacraments. It's why they got so excited and excommunicated. Archbishop Lefebvre and the other bishop that consecrated our four bishops with him in 1988, that's why they got so excited. They never have gotten so excited over the old Catholics, for example. Oh, who are they? You might do a little reading on history. You need to know history, lest it come back to haunt you and to destroy us. And so let us pray hard for those striving with all their hearts to keep close to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the sacraments and to his blessed mother who is the conduit for him and for all the graces that come into this world. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat>
space with money substantiated. There are no means per hoons. Queen money is being first part of Jones. So she be something. In spirit, in the dark, he's in the line of it. Amen. 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 Omnipotent. So, sa piyat ng mga sakripisyo, hindi man nabistuwis, at lahat ng gloryam na manisuwi, adyo rin tatin kong pinasram sa tukoy eklesi, suwi sa mga tiyo. Per omnia saecula saeculorum. Amen. Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spiritus. Sursum corda. Habimus a dominum. Gratias agamus domino Deo nostro. Denium et justum. <coughs> Vere dignum et justum est decum et salutare. Nos tibi semper dubique gratias agere. Domine sancte pater omnipotens eterni Deus per Christum dominum nostrum. Per quem maestatem tuam laudant angeli. Adorum dominationes tremum potestates. Celi celerumque virtutes ac beatas seraphim. Socia exultation con celebrant, cum quibus et nostras voces, ut admiti ubias de precamor, supplici confessione dicentes, sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Sabaot, plenis in celi et terra gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. Benedictum, as we Corpus, it is We predate one water rate, we'll check the panem in some place. 
guys. Corpus et Sanctum. Nobis quoque peccatoribus. Per omnia saecula saeculorum. Amen. Oremus preceptis salutaribus moniti et divina institutione formate ad emus dicere. Pater noster qui es in celi sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra, panem nostrum quotidianum danibus hodie, et dimitin nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem. Sed leveranus summa. Amen. Per omnia saecula saeculorum. Amen. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum. Et cum spiritu. Amen. 
Agnus de equitolis peccata mundi miserere nobis. Agnus de equitolis peccata mundi miserere nobis. Agnus de equitolis peccata mundi dona nobis pacem. Panem celestem accipiam in nomen Domini in voc abo. A Domine non sum dignus interes. Domine non sum dignus interes. Domine non sum dignus interes. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi. Son was to be lost with Jesus Christ, because to be done, need of eternal man. Confessed you couldn't be at the mass, the rest of the virgin be at the mass, and you'll 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 be at the mass, Quia pigabini mis quiero hacione verbi et opere. Mia culpa, mia culpa, mia maxima culpa. Eri pec robiat ma rebarem sin per virgin beatum le cangino beatum vene baptistam. Sancta sapatulo spet vet paulo omne sanctus seque pater. Orare pro mia dominum deum nostrum. Misriatra vestri omnipotens Deus et de demissus peccatus vestris perducat vos ad vitam eterna. Amen. Inducentium absolutionum et remissione pectorum vestrum tribuat vobis omnipotens et miseri cors dominus. Amen. Actionius de ecce qui tolit peccata mundi, Domini non sum dignus, ut interest of tecno meum sed tantum dic verbo et sanabitur anima mea, Domini non sum dignus, ut interest of tecno meum sed tantum dic verbo et sanabitur anima mea, Domini non sum dignus, ut interest of tecno meum sed tantum dic verbo et sanabitur anima mea. Vita.
Puri sum si, Mr. Me. Puri mente kapi amasit de munari ne prali. Sempiternum. Amen dico vobis quod vos qui reliquisti somni et sicuri estis me centuplum accipietis et vitam eternam pos et ebitis. The Dominus vobiscum. Et com spirit tum. Oremus. O quesimus omnipotens Deus, ut qui Celestia alimenta percepimus intercedente beato Filippo confessore tuo, per hec contra omnia adversa muniamor, per dominum nostrum Jesum Christum filium tuum, qui tecum vive de regnat in unitate spiritus sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spirit tuum. Ite misa est. Deo gratias. Pace. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Dominus vobiscum. Et cum spirit tuum. Dimitium sancti evangelii secundum Ioannem. Gloria te bidum. In principio erat verbum, et verbum erat. Apud Deum et Deus erat verbum, hoc erat in principio, apud Deum. Omnia per ipsum facta sunt, et sine ipsum factum est nicil quo factum est, in ipsum vita erat, et vita erat lux hominum. Et lux in tenebris lucet, et tenebris eam non comprehenderunt. Quid homo misus a Deo, cui nomen erat Ioannes, hic venet in testimonium a testimonium per hiberit de lumine, et omnes crater in per illum, non erat ille luxit, et testimonium per hiberit de lumine, erat lux vera quae illuminat omnem hominem venientem in hunc mundum, in mundo erat et mundus pripsum factus est, et mundus eam non cognovit in propria venit et sui eam non reciperment. Quod quod autum reciperment eum dede deis potestatem filius dei fieri, his qui credunt in nomine eos, qui non ex sanguinibus neque ex voluntate carnis, neque ex voluntate vieri, sed ex Deo nati sunt, et verbum caro factum est, et habitavit in nobis, et vidimus gloriam eos gloriam quasi, unigeniti a patre plenum gratiae, et veritatis. Dio gratis. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the 
fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs of mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. That we may be devoted to the promises of Christ. Let us pray, O God, our refuge and our strength, look down with favor upon thy people who cry to thee, and through the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of blessed Joseph, her spouse, of thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all thy saints, do thou mercifully and graciously hear the prayers which we pour forth for the conversion of sinners and for the freedom and exaltation of Holy Mother Church through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And Holy Michael, Archangel, defend us in this day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast down to hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. O most sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy. Uh,